Guys, is your graphics card getting too hot or are the fans spinning up too much? Then it, you might benefit from optimizing your graphics card cooling and specifically switching out the thermal paste or also don't forget the thermal pads. Arctic has provided me with some product samples, but guys, don't worry, I've used Arctic long before they provided me with samples and I have prepared an example graphics card for you that needs some overhaul. And as I have demonstrated to you, that graphics card gets pretty noisy, slightly unpleasant. So that definitely needs some uh, working on. And that's what we're going to do. I took the measurements before so that you can have an overview. The fan really spins up to 110%. The temperature is 79 degrees Celsius, respectively 175 Fahrenheit. And also the wattage is only 140 watts, which I think uh, it could be a little bit higher. And also the frequency, which leads me to believe there might be even some throttling involved due to the unfavorable thermals. So let's do a quick replacement. I'll walk you through the replacement, how to change the thermal paste as well as the thermal pads and what you have to consider. Let's get rolling. And obviously the first thing we have to do is to take the graphics card apart. Uh, for that, we just took a normal screwdriver and I sped up the whole process as well. Um, one small piece of advice that I can still give you is if there are different types of screws, make sure you order them. Sometimes uh, there are longer ones and shorter ones so that there is no confusion. And then we can take off the back plate, do that very gently. And as you can see here, there are some thermal pads and a slight uh, extrusion then we take the graphics card itself if i zoom in a little bit for you here you see there's a small power connector for the fans maybe take a fine screwdriver to take that out with hands itself is a little bit difficult you can see here i flip that right up and you have disconnected the fan assembly and with the sapphire cards you could even switch out the fans if they're aging that would also be an option but i'm fine with cleaning everything and re, uh, replacing the paste. Here you can see the backside of the graphics card, the uh, thermal pads on the VRMs and one more screw that we have to uh, remove and the cooling element comes right off. As you can see, the thermal paste is pretty dried out, but also the thermal pads are not in such a great condition. So we're gonna clean all that in a second and replace it. And uh, very important, carefully take off some of these thermal pads to measure them in just a second. I'm gonna use a razor blade for that and you definitely want to measure the thermal pads to get the appropriate size here it's 0.6 millimeters approximately i'm also using these arctic cleaner cloths uh, they work pretty well a little bit of an intense smell there but very nice to clean them and here at the back you see that's already dried out these thermal pads are really dried out that's the back side of the vrms so that's the power delivery and the heat transfer to the back plate. Let that dry off a little bit from cleaning it. And the most difficult thing probably was to uh, apply these thermal pads because the 0.5 millimeters is very thin and these uh, Arctic TP3 thermal pads, they are very soft. So a little bit trickier, the thinner the thermal pads are but the thinner the thermal pads also the better the heat transfer, so that works great. Next up is the application of the thermal paste. I have some Arctic MX4 right here, but guys, I also can recommend the Arctic MX6 that has slightly better performance, it's a little bit thicker. So if you still have some MX4 lying around, you can use that but I can also recommend the MX6, which I'm gonna put in a link below. Use this small, tiny piece size amount. Some people, they apply a little bit more, a little bit less. Important is that you have a good contact. And for cleaning the copper part and the heating element, please use a separate uh, cleaning cloth. And you can see I also applied some thermal pads on the backside where the VRMs are, because the VRMs usually they get pretty warm. It's not just the graphics processor and the RAM, it's also the VRMs. That's something you wanna make sure there is a good contact there with the backplate. And if you followed my advice and sorted the screws a little bit, 
you have the right links at the uh, at the right place you can put that in very comfortably and uh, assembling it back is easy what i'm going to do now is just a small visual inspection i'm not gonna maybe it's not just gonna show that well on the video so let me put that a little bit in focus and there you go you want to make sure and visually inspect that there is a contact everywhere so that's in my case the case so let's put that into the computer and do a benchmark terrific now you have seen step by step what you have to do and how i actually did it and now let me quickly show you the before and after results side by side and as you can see very nice results guys i'm really regretting not having this done earlier because for quite some time this graphics card has been pretty sensitive as soon as you put load on it it became pretty loud and now the fans are much quieter and only run at 60 percent as well as that we see a nice temperature drop from 79 degrees celsius to 68 which is my in my opinion is pretty significant and also explains why why the fans don't have to work nearly as hard as before so i'm really glad i did that the power draw also went up to 153 watts and even the frequency uh, went up slightly uh, that might give you a few fps more but not that much but uh, overall like uh, you can consider that graphics card i think has only four vrms <clears throat> that's really uh only the vrms that are necessary so my thinking is the vrms probably did run pretty hot uh, which might have led them to thr throttle and the, the hotter and vrm is the less efficient it also is so i'm very happy to have worked on that graphics card and guys if you have a brand new graphics card you really have don't have to do that um, in most likely uh, of a case so maybe your graphics card is two years old everything should be fine but in my case i used it for two years and then after that uh, gradually the terminal performance started to deteriorate and the card got a little bit louder and louder all over over time so uh, when you notice that that could be a good point in time to do these replacement jobs it's not that difficult if you know what you do if you're a little bit technically inclined if you watch my video or somebody else's video and if you consider the, the most tricky part is not the thermal paste in my opinion the most tricky part is the thermal pads because you should measure them don't use some that are too thin don't use some that are too thick uh, do the measurement and then you should be fine and also the thinner the thermal pad the harder they are to apply so it's a little bit finicky uh, especially if you use the thinnest variety 0.5 millimeters here but otherwise the performance speaks for itself it really helps to do that after a couple years guys awesome for tuning in let me know what other uh, pc related content you would like to see or what questions do you have i see you as a subscriber and in the next video stay awesome